Hello, my name is John Lee, and I'm the president of Alpha Training and Consulting, and I have a true passion for preparing students for ASQ certification exams. I love it. Okay, but today what we're going to do is we're going to go over practice exam questions for the ASQ CMQOE exam, a wonderful certification there, and we're getting all the questions today from the CMQ Primer, which comes from uh, the Quality Council of Indiana. What a great product they, they create and what a great group of people they are to work with. I've been working with them for decades. Wonderful company. In fact, we use the CQO, uh, CMQ Primer in our online class. What we have you do is listen to all our lectures, take all the exams, and at the end we have you review the primer, then we go over all the questions from the primer in our videos. Uh, so we're just going to give you a sample today, one or two questions from each chapter. It'll give you a good flavor for uh, what they have, and it will help prepare you for the, your certification exam. If you're interested in our online class, please go to www.asqcmq.com. I created a website specifically for the Certified Manager of Quality Certification. Answers many questions there. I think there's 10 or 11 videos on that website to answer any question you may have. So if you have a chance, please check that out. Otherwise, let's get started on these exam questions. Okay, let's look at number four here and see how we do on that one. For employee involvement, oh, ASQ loves employee involvement. Efforts to succeed, what may be needed? Increased employee incentives? Deming wasn't really big on incentives. And so when Deming said something, that became part of the ASQ's value system. So just so you know, that's not going to be it. Increase basic training company-wide. They like training. That's good. Employee understanding. Oh, understanding is better than training. People get trained all the time, and they don't understand what they were just trained on. So understanding shows more effectiveness, and ASQ loves effectiveness. So employee understanding of how they can make a difference. Whoa, that's huge. That's a home run for an ASQ exam. You're not going to get better than that. Uh, it's going to be C. The initiation of pilot projects. No, that word understanding there and make a difference are too positive. It has four, has to be C, and it is. The modern quality manager has many roles to fill. That's true. Remember, whenever they have a sentence in front of the question, they're just stating a fact. You're not supposed to question it. Which of the following would be considered the most critical? most critical for a modern quality manager supporting and providing technical direction for the organization's improvement teams yeah that could be true providing leadership input support for the company's visions and policies that could be correct also what are we seeing here more than one correct answer when it's one more than one correct answer what do we do we pick the most general one improving the quality level of the organization's product and services could be Implementing improvement in the organization quality cost effort. They're all correct. ASQ does quite a bit of this. They're all correct. Whenever you have more than one correct answer, you look for the more general one. Uh, a, organization's improvement teams. That has a taste of specificity to it, so I don't like that one. Providing leadership. That's very general. Input and support for the company's visions and policies. Notice says input and support. So I like that one better. This is a very general one. My guess is it's going to be the correct one. Improving the quality level of the organization's products and services. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. That's kind of limiting a little bit, not much. But uh, a little too much specificity, I feel, compared to B. Implementing improvement in the organization's quality cost effort. That's very specific there. The most general one is B. And so I'm going to pick B. Am I confident on this one? Yes, because it's a very good test-taking rule is pick the most general when you have multiple correct answers. Now, I see a lot of students say, I, I must sell it too much, by the way, and they'll use most general on every question. No, you only use the most general when you have multiple correct answers. This is the perfect example of that, and B is the perfect example of a very general answer. So 2.7 is B, and that is correct. Uh, 3.5 up here where we can see it comfortably. There it is. Which of the following constitutes a strategic quality goal? Remember, it's going to be more pie in the sky 
tactical is going to be more specific. Answer customer complaints within two weeks? No, that's more tactical. Reduce the finish, finishing department scrap rate? Uh, it should say reduce it to what, but uh, it could be because it's not as specific. Perform inspection checks on work in progress. Obtain a superior customer quality rating. Hmm. Of all these, I would say the more strategic sounding pie in the sky is D. Obtain a superior customer quality rating. Okay, so I, I feel that's the best one. Uh, it's, it's, there's more things that feed into this, but I'm not sure on this one, to be honest with you. But also, do I think you could look this one up? It's kind of iffy. Uh, you may be able to, but it may take you a while. To, and you may have to read quite a few pages. So I'm going with uh, D on this one. So let's see if 5 is D. And I feel a little bit lucky on that one, but it is D. What is the best reason for a plant manager to request a full plant assessment? So he's kind of doing a full audit, trying to figure out what's going on. A consultant says it's a good idea? No. ASQ, usually when it says consultant, it's looking for something positive, it's wrong. Even though Deming was a consultant, Crosby was a consultant, all the gurus were consultants, uh, they don't usually make that the right answer. They don't necessarily look highly upon consultants. At least that's the way it looks when they write the test. So just so you're aware. So this is not the correct answer. He or she feels that something is wrong? Yes, of course. That's why you do it. I feel something's wrong. Let's do an assessment, see if we can figure it out. So that's possibility. The only downside to this, it is kind of gut feel, but it still answers the question well. So it may not be right, but I'm more than 50% positive that's correct. The management team has solved many problems. Uh, what does that have to do with anything? An assessment is occasionally needed. Okay, it could be. So B and D uh, could be it. I'm going to read it again. What is the best reason for a plant manager to request a full plant assessment? An assessment is occasionally needed? Maybe, maybe not, but probably. Mm. But I still feel it's B. This is a hair splitter question. It could go either way. But uh, if I have to choose, I'm going to say it comes down to this one. He or she feels that something is wrong. And we'll see if we get that one. This is number seven. And it's B. So I got lucky on that one. It is B. Uh, if you miss hair splitter questions, I'm not so concerned about that. The main objective of a benefit cost analysis is to identify project benefits. Yeah. Estimate the project cost factors. Determine if the project would be worthwhile. Calculate the next ne net project gain or loss. All of those are good. So what are you going to do? You're going to pick one that's most general. And I think determine if a project will be worthwhile. That's pretty general. So 11 I'm going to say is C and that is correct. Considering an individual in the patterns of promoter, persuader, counselor, and appraiser indicates what disc dimension is being considered. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't remember that model, so this is a lookup one, though. Uh, but we'll, I'll give it my best guess on logic. My logic is usually what helps students. Uh, even when I get it wrong, at least you can and see what uh, you would do differently. So patterns of promoter, persuader, counselor, and appraiser. From all those words, I think the best fit is influence. So I'm going to say 20 is B. And it is. How did I answer that one? I didn't know what it was. I just looked at these words and found a good alignment. You can answer a lot of ASQ questions if you look for alignment. And, uh, and so that's good to do. Even if it's a lookup one, at least it gets you quick, closer to the right answer so you can look it up quicker. All right, congratulations, you've almost completed that video. As you can see, I have a lot of experience in ASQ exams. I've passed most of their certifications myself. 
So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me through my website at alphatc.com. Go to the Contact Us option. Send me a message. I'll get back with you as soon as possible. Again, that's alphatc.com. Thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye. A thorough review of the works of the major quality gurus would indicate which of the following to be the most effective way to create quality. I mean, this could go in many different directions. So let, we're just going to have to read it and see. Effective problem solving? Yeah, of course that's going... I mean, I don't know how that could be wrong, to be honest with you. But let's see. There could be something b bigger uh, that matches ASQ's quality or value system better. Benchmarking the best competitive pra practices? No. Uh, benchmarking is just a, an element of uh, continuous process improvement, so it's not encompassing enough. Continuous process improvement, there it is, okay. Continuous process improvement is better than effective problem solving. Okay, so it's going to be C. I thought at first it was A, but no, C trumps that uh, altogether. Modern statistical control techniques, no, that's just a tool that goes into these other ones. So as far as effectiveness and a good broad answer, it's going to be C, no doubt. I, I'll look at it, but I already know it's going to be C. Remember, there's not many more things more po there's not things more positive in the ASQ value system than creating continuous process improvement, except for maybe profit. Okay, what is the principal function of the quality department to provide service to all other departments? Maybe to coordinate the quality effort. That's it. That's, that's better than the A. I think this will be the correct answer. To maintain inspection and process control? Yeah, but uh, this is a more general answer here. You see, all of these could be correct. <clears throat> when they're all correct, you pick the more general one, and definitely B is more general. To direct strategic organizational activities? Uh, not necessarily. It could be part of it if you're up in the upper echelon of the company, but the best one by far here is B, uh, to coordinate the quality effort. And I've seen that question on ASQ exams before, so take good note of that. You may see it also. And that is correct. Reduced cycle times for a product can result in reduced work in pro progress, reduced waste, and... So it's looking for something positive. Increased product costs, that's a negative. Improved operations, that's a positive, it's going to be the correct answer. Excess, in, excess inventories, that's negative. Longer tack times, negative. This is asking for a positive, so it's going to be B. Which of the following measurements would normally be included when establishing process goals? Which of the following measurements would normally be included when establishing goals? Effectiveness, efficiency, and adaptability. I don't know about adaptability, but efficiency and effectiveness are definitely important metrics. I don't doubt that that's the correct answer. Process duration and value added cost per unit. I don't like that one because it sounds like manufacturing, and uh, if you have the option of not picking the manufacturing, that's well, usually correct. So I don't like B. Cycle time and supplier delay time. Cycle time and supplier delay time. No, effectiveness and efficiency is way better, and cycle time can be part of that. So it could be correct, but this is more general. Process accuracy and processing time. No, same thing. These could all be correct, but the, when, remember when you have multiple correct ones, you pick the most general. This is by far the most general. So 13 is A, and that is correct. It's okay. When plotting a process with the intention of monitoring trends, which of the following statements apply? So plotting a process for monitoring trends. An increase in the mean and a decrease in the variation is desirable. We don't have enough information here to say those types of things. We just don't. Uh, the mean is not as important as the variation. It depends on the process, totally dependent upon the process. They tell us nothing about the process, so that there's not enough information in that uh, question to make either one of those correct. A decrease in both the mean and variation is desirable. Again, these are all, there's not enough information. Leaves D has to be the one. The optimum mean may be lower or higher than current values. That's true. 
So that's for sure D for most of you. Advantages of using trend analysis data are a determination may be made as to whether the process has changed. Maybe. That's a non-absolute. That's a non-absolute. There's no way this is incorrect. May be made as to whether the process has changed. I'm pretty sure that's it. And if I'm taking the test, I'm being honest with you, I don't even read the rest of those. Because uh, maybe's in there and it's a correct statement, nothing is going to trump that. If trends are favorable, the graph provides the reason. No, not necessarily. Uh, it may show you some things, but you're the ones that have to use reason and come up with a cause, not the tool. All of the data collected at a given point in time can be displayed on the same graph. Not if you had 20 million data points, it may not be able to. Cyclical data pattern max, maximums and minimums will exceed. I don't know that. There's not enough information to say that. So I already knew it was A. It is A. How did I know? Because it says may be. The internal customer can be helped through which of the following methods or practices? The silo effect. It's looking for a positive, by the way. This is negative. Silo effect is when engineering says, okay, production, I'm finished. Don't come back to me. You own it now. Uh, that's not good. Okay, this is very negative. Departmental competition, ASQ does not agree with in competition. As a plant manager, I thought I, it was a good idea, so I, do, I tried it a couple times, made it a little livelier and uh, what have you, but then they started playing defense, and then I quickly jumped on the ASQ side of the fence, and I didn't do it anymore. I've never had any great experience with uh, internal competition. So I agree with ASQ there. So A and B are out. They're both negative. Staff specialists providing advice to line employees only upon request. No, they're saying only upon request. ASQ likes a lot of communication. They don't like limiting communication. So by process of elimination, I already know what the correct answer is because I know none of those are. D, effective communications between department. Bing, they like effective. That's a good key word for a correct answer on an ASQ exam. Communications, they love more communications, better than less communication. So no doubt, D. I, mean, I almost don't even want to look it up. But there it is, I did, and it is D. What works best in starting a customer-driven effort? What works best? It's looking for a positive. Using standardized training for all employees? That's training. That's good, but it ha I'm looking for a good, better answer to have something to do with effectiveness, that you actually implement something into the real world. So I like A, I'm not throwing it out, but I don't, in the end, I think I can find something better. Using a customized approach to customer satisfaction. Yeah, look at that, customer satisfaction, customized to every individual. You're not gonna get better than that, I don't think. But because of what happened a couple questions ago, I'm gonna read them anyway. Bringing in a consultant, <clears throat> no. No, 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 that's always wrong. I've never seen that be correct. They could trick us, but uh, up to date, I've taken a lot of these tests. I've never seen that be a correct answer. It's just like manufacturing is the wrong answer. So are consultants, unless they're looking for a negative. Following one of the quality gurus, prescribed programs. Okay, following, following without even thinking about how that aligns with your company's uh, desires. No way, that's out. So it has to be B. Feel very confident with B. So let's go 8, 10, uh, B is correct. And I knew it would be, as I'm sure you did. What is the best purpose of a supplier partnership? Partnership, you get to share resources, information. Uh, so let's look at these. It's definitely going to be a positive. To improve each other's operations, yes. Other than operations isn't the best word for a correct answer, but I like it to improve each other. To provide JIT capabilities uh, just in time, that's great, and, uh, but it's too specific. To cover for each other's deficiencies, no, sometimes uh, you both have the same deficiency and it makes it worse. So I don't think it's C. To enjoy marketplace dominance. Uh, not necessarily. That doesn't necessarily going to take place. So I don't like operations here, but of all the options given, I like A best. 
So 9.2a, please be a. It is a. The most desirable method of evaluating a supplier is. Most desirable. Could have some do. Uh, look at that. History evaluation. There it is again. Uh, just like the last one. A survey, survey evaluation, a questionnaire, discussion with the quality manager. This is face-to-face -face communication, but it's just with the quality manager. And uh, so I think the more powerful one with my experience of taking ASQ exams is uh, communicated to you earlier is A. 9.8 is A, and it is correct again. It is in the preparation and delivery of effective technical training. This is effective. Which of the following is the most important consideration for the content and delivery of the training package? Okay, I like effective and a good answer, so I see right off there's two effectives ones there. Good room temperature and control. I mean, that's important. Uh, if you're freezing to death or sweating, that's not going to help. Effective presenters and instructors. If you don't have that, you're going to be in trouble, no matter what you do. An effective presenter instructor can even make up for deficits in other areas. So I'd say B is probably going to be the correct answer. Effective training facility accommodations, yes, but if you don't have good presenters instructors, everyone's going to fall asleep anyway. An open line of sight, that's important, uh, but still, if you have a good presenter, they're going to make sure that takes place anyway. So I feel B is more encompassing. I'm going to go 10-4 as B. And that is correct. If one went, were to summarize the results of a training needs analysis into a few words, what would be the best selection from the choices presented below? Summarize the results of a training needs analysis. It's also called a gap analysis. Providing incentives and meaningful work. Not the incentives thing. I don't see that aligning with this question. Giving cognitive support. No, not, not for uh, training needs analysis. Identify performance gaps. That's the correct one. I even said that earlier on here. Uh, but you're looking for gaps. Where do you want the student to be as far as skill set and where they're currently at? You find that gap. You provide training to fill that gap. So I'm sure this is going to be C. Developing skills and knowledge. No. After you find the gap, that's when you perform the skills and knowledge. So it's going to be C. 10.5 is C, and that is correct.